Well, hello, dear friends from Uban Rajanthani. So this is a, a city that's on the sort of the, it, well, it's one of the main cities inside of uh, Isan province. Uh, that province is the largest province in uh, Thailand. Uh, if you go to any of the tourist places like Bangkok or Phuket or any of those places and you ask most people where they're from, uh, oftentimes they'll be from Isan. So this is a large agricultural area. It's also in terms of just square miles or square kilometers. It's the largest in Thailand. And um, it's, uh, so I'm in a city that's uh, fairly close to the, uh, the Lao and Cambodian border. Today, uh, I've rented a motorbike and I'm gonna head out towards the, uh, the Laotian and Cambodian uh, border. Uh, there's a couple sites out there. There's a national park I'm gonna stop at and there's also a confluence of the rivers uh, into the Mekong called the, uh, uh, the Two Color River. Uh, it's supposed to be really amazing and a couple other stops along the way, so. So about an hour by motorbike out of uh, Uban Rachantani is the Wat Pu Prao Temple. Uh, this temple is famous for being kind of a, a glow-in-the-dark uh, temple. I'm here at 11 <laughs> in the middle of the day, so I'm not going to get the full effect of the glow-in-the-dark temple, but it's, uh, it's supposed to be beautiful any time of the day that you visit. Um, it's gorgeous. Uh, sort of open air temple that has um, you know just the roof and the floor and then the Buddha in the back and then a fairly open um, floor plan uh, and people come here to you know to to uh, pay their respects to the Buddha and of course uh, in the back of the the temple there's a statue of the Buddha underneath the uh, representation of the banyan tree uh, where he gained enlightenment um, if you know anything about uh, Buddhism. And at the rear of the temple, you'll find this tree. Now, at night, this uh, glows iridescently. Um, and people come and, and view this. This is supposed to be quite a sight. Uh, if you Google it, you'll find lots of pictures of this at night. Not too many pictures of it in the daytime. So this sort of like goes along with my Thailand off the beaten path, I suppose, seeing the glowing temple in the daytime rather than at night. Uh, just this, just amazing work here. Um, and this is such a prominent, you know, area in the landscape. It's just gorgeous. You're up here at the top of this hill and you get to enjoy such a beautiful view of the valley around you. So about a half hour from the temple via motorbike is the two color river viewpoint. So this is really interesting in the sense that you have these two major rivers. You have the Mekong there and you have the Mung River here. And the Mung is flowing into the Mekong basically. Um, this is the one spot where they meet. Um, and if you look this way, over here, uh, that is Laos. That's Laos and I'm in Thailand. So this is really just on the just on the border of uh, Laos and Thailand and Cambodia would be that way. So pretty close to all three sort of a you know kind of a golden triangle spot. You can find a similar spot up north um, near Chiang Rai where you can see Myanmar, Laos, Thailand all in the same spot. Uh, but the unique feature with this is that the, the rivers sort of bring together two different colors, especially during the rainy season. Um, the Mekong will be a lot muddier and the Hmong, the Hmong will be more, you know, full of sediment. And when they meet, they're typically two different colors. Um, the Mekong generally more brown and uh, sort of, sort of sense of sediment, you know, rich. Um, Right now I'm here during kind of dry season, so we're not getting, it's not a huge difference in color. But it's still, what, it's such an amazing spot to kind of just stand and realize kind of where you are in terms of the relation to this, the, 
the country. There's also a um, temple here. is the Batem uh, National Park. One of the first things you'll find as you enter the National Park here are these rock formations. Uh, a lot of people call them the mushroom rocks or the rock pillars, but they're basically, you know, prehistoric rock formations. And, you know, the, the process of erosion, you know, over millions of years have exposed them. And uh, now they sort of look the way they do now, like big mushrooms, basically. I'm here midweek, and uh, boy, it's just it's great because there's like pretty much nobody here. So I have the uh, you know, the whole park to myself, at least uh, starting out here, which is nice. Uh, it was what 220, 220 baht to get in to the park on the motorbike. So I don't know if it's more if you bring a car or uh, you know a mini bus or that kind of thing so one of the offerings at the park are the the paintings the cliff paintings those are uh over three thousand years old so there's some really good um representations of that here um it's about a four kilometer hike through and back to get to the 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 paintings the trail uh, along the cliff to you the cave paintings are pretty mellow um, that's basically all paved or sort of existing rocks most of it's in the shade at least at 2 p.m. so that's kind of nice you're not really in the midday Sun because you're so sort of up against the cliff here and you look above it's just gorgeous I mean just you're basically walking under this large cliff hang the entire time and there's just nice cool breeze flowing <clears throat> and uh, it's quiet uh, there's a bamboo forest just to the right this is all very peaceful and relaxing so here's the sort of the main cave painting group you can see uh, on the wall here you know, these paintings are over 3,000 years old um, there's an elephant and turtle. There's some palms, uh, giant catfish, uh, stingray, also fishing device that uh, natively it was called a tum. Well, if you do come to the park, I really recommend, um, if you can, doing a motor scooter out here. Um, you really get a, a great view of the countryside, the Thai countryside. There's lots of little, um, smaller villages that you pass through. Um, the roads are really well kept here. Um, so I, I, did, I haven't felt unsafe or concerned about uh, cross traffic or anything like that. Um, people seem to be respectful of, of motorbikes on the shoulder. Shoulders are nice and wide and well marked. The roads are well marked. Um, so if you ever consider doing that, Thailand's not a bad place to do that. I rented my motorbike at the airport. I think it's uh, 250 Thai baht a day, and I'll return it to the airport as well. But it's a great way to cover a lot of distance, especially in a, a province like Isan that's so sort of spread out, you know, and there are l far less tourists uh, coming to Isan. Um, so the infrastructure that you would find in a place like Patia or uh, Wahin or B Bangkok, just <clears throat> it's not as um, robust here. So, um, so a great option. Grab a, grab a scooter for a day, 250 baht, and uh, head out of the city and see some of these great off the beaten path, um, you know, trips and activities in Thailand. You know, Thailand's got a lot more to offer than uh, massage parlors and Buddhist temples and uh, muddy rivers. Is that how the song goes? 
So you better go back to your bars, your temples, your massage parlors. Because if you come to Isan, you're going to end up seeing wall paintings and, oh, a big glow-in-the-dark temple or uh, any number of, of things. So a uh, two-color river. So lots to offer out here. Um, in addition to all the other things that Thailand offers um, that most people know about. Well, I feel lucky. You know, there's a, I guess it's a, a four-kilometer loop sort of through the national park here. It goes from sort of by the visitor center down along the cliff where all the paintings are, then up through kind of the, there's a section of sort of bamboo, kind of a bamboo forest there. And then now this is kind of this, more of a kind of a scrub forest, I guess, uh, up back up on the top of the, the cliff where the, the paintings are underneath you. But um, you know, I haven't seen another single person <laughs> on this trail. And uh, I, I think I saw two people at the visitor center. Um, but so if you like, you know, just <clears throat> pounding your way through uh, the Thai National Park uh, without any people around, this is the plan. <laughs> Come here on a Tuesday around two and uh, you may have the same experience. It's a four kilometer loop, so it's not too bad. Just make sure you bring some water along with you and you should be fine. Well, good morning, dear friends. Another day in Uban, Rachantani. Today I'm at the Talad Ya Market. It's a big, sort of wet local market. Um, they sell all sorts of great stuff here. Um, all the ingredients that go into Thai food and um, all the fresh ingredients, fresh meats and seafood, as well as the other ingredients that you may find. Um, so this is really about as sort of local and traditional as you can get in terms of markets. Um, I would not be surprised if I'm the only foreigner here, but uh, the items here that you'll find are, um, you know, bean sprouts, bean curd, um, local honey, lots of meats and seafood, and um, plenty of um, desserts. Uh, little guys, I wonder if they make soup. Maybe soup out of it, out of the tinies. This is also a great place to get really inexpensive meals. There's a bunch of food carts sort of set up on the back uh, backside, and you know that stuff is fresh. Hello. It's the hardest working couple in the uh, market today. I think it's cucumber, maybe. Looks like it's a large, like sort of a larger cucumber, skinned, and then they have these. She's got like kind of a special grating knife. This is right, um, sort of right on the river as well, you know, that cuts through the city, the, uh, the river here. This is the, uh, it's the Mung River, Mung River, Mung, Mung, or, Mu or Mekong. Mung River? Ah. Mun, mun. So this this market sits right on the this sits right on the uh, Mung River. That moon, 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 moon. Ah. Goes into the Mekong. Ah, this is the Moon River. Ah, gotcha. Kapung Kap. Swati Kap. Sabai Mai. Can I take a picture, okay? Did you catch these fish? The Mung?
Catfish. Moon. 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 <laughs> this one's still alive. Moon. Moon. Oh, little guys. They're all, they're all kind of laughing at me for how I pronounce moon, the river moon. Moon. <laughs> moon. Everybody. Yeah. How you say? How you say moon? You want to say moon? Moon. 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 Okay. Lots of fresh uh, pork over here. Uh, interestingly, pork is called moo instead of beef, which you would think would be called moo. Uh, this looks like liver and uh, their little hooves. I, uh, I kind of wince when it gets a little too biological, when I can see the snout or I can see the, the footprint or the, the hoof. Then I start to get a little worried. Uh, these are all chicken feet. Of course, you see this a lot in Asia, Asia cooking. Uh, I've tried chicken feet a couple times and I have to tell you that uh, just one of those things that seemed to be a lot more trouble than it's worth. He looks a little concerned. He's got the concern. So one of the things about the the markets that are so compelling, I guess, for me as a foreigner or visitor is that you just get exposed to like so many different flavors and smells and people and, you know, usually when I go to a, a, a local market, you know, every Thai person I come in contact with is always super nice, always greets you with a smile, always wants to help you with pronunciation, is always happy to see you. Um, so fairly consistent, um, you know, kindness within the, the Thai people, which is always nice. Um, but you get such a good kind of like brush against the, the culture when you go to uh, places of commerce, markets, you know, in particular, local markets, you know, tend to be those places. You know, people spend their their days, you know, behind these tables making food or selling fish or and uh, this is where they live, they exist and spend their time and their their money and their social, you know, energy. This, this is sort of where that happens. The markets, you know, are always markets and the temples tend to be the center of communities in a way that, you know, lets you, as a foreigner, get a window into um, a culture that, that uh, you may not be completely familiar with. Back onto the purple steed. All right, ready to go. So no trip to Uban, Rachantani would be complete without a stop at their central park, the Thung Sai Muang Park. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, this is the, the site of the, there's a large candle festival they have here once a year. And this is kind of where all those festivities happen. Um, the sculpture behind me is part of that sort of central candle. It's like 22 meters tall or something. Um, I, I, you know what I really love is just the subtlety of this, you know, it's not goddess or it doesn't stand out at all. It almost blends into the background. I am a golden god. It's completely covered in gold leaf. You know, it's, it's, it has a, a dragon and a boat and uh, somebody driving the boat and this massive sort of pillar in the center that is just ornately carved. Um, the entire 
sculpture is just you know covered in gold leaf as well and it's just quite a sight you know and especially in the sunlight it's just you know bright and uh, it just looks beautiful against the the blue sky Temple dogs, kind of like a temple of the dog. Oh yeah, pee in the hole, smart guy. <laughs> so this temple here, Thung Sai Moang, it was built uh, 18, oh, 1820s. And it was built originally to house the, uh, there's a replica of the Buddha footprint that's housed here. Um, and then Beside it is this really interesting structure uh, called the library. Um, <clears throat> basically, they built it on stilts uh, out of wood, and they put it in the middle of this pond to kind of protect it from ants and termites and that kind of thing. So that's why it's, it sort of exists in this pond. And uh, if you look closely into the pond, you'll see fish as well. But um, originally, it was there to protect it from from insects and, and termites. One of the things you see over and over again on the streets are just small sort of pop-up businesses, you know, people doing all sorts of different labor-intensive activities, you know, like um, seamstresses or sewing or selling drinks or fruit or, uh, in this case, uh, somebody just basically, it's like a pop-up um, tailor this guy is making uh, repairs and, and sewing clothes. And then just a little bit further down the street, there's a guy who has a pop-up barbershop. So you can pull up to his shop there and get a haircut. Basically, um, he's got a little mirror attached to the wall. and. Uh, his little barber seats up here. Who knows how long he's been doing this here. But uh, he's got a customer or two. Just a little quick street barber haircut on my way to the next site. This would be Uban, Uban Barber. Uban Barber. Well, the temple here is, this one is called the Lat Tat Nambua. This is a temple that uh, was built to sort of resemble the temple that's built uh, in India, in the site where the Buddha reached enlightenment. Um, this was built in the 1950s, and it's just, you know, just towers, you know, behind you. I think it's 56 meters tall. Um, I mean, it's just really, um, really imposing in terms of its size and and just its um, the scope of its you know adornment to every single block you know on the um, tower itself is inscribed and carved with different figures um, it has a lovely um, kind of gold and white uh, motif that you'll see uh, all over the grounds here so within the um, temple here they have these automated um, donation machines and I think there's also one that will give you a lucky number and uh, each of these I think are different poses for different days of the week so depending upon what day of the week uh, you're here to give a donation you get a certain pose Wednesday or Thursday or Friday um, but there's also one with the lucky number and if you get the lucky number, it's, um, you can take it and bet <laughs> there's a bunch of lottery sellers out front. And uh, you can use your lucky number that you get here to uh, bet on it after you receive your lucky merit, your lucky number for giving merit to the temple. And it's customary if you win a large uh, amount from that, to return to the temple and give the temple a big chunk of it, as well as the vendor that sold you the lottery ticket. <laughs> 